Hi, it's Mike. Welcome to my shop. Thanks for clicking in. This video is part three of my one watt amplifier build. As some of you might be following along, I'm building this one watt guitar amplifier from scratch. So the first two videos were, you know, building the chassis and doing all the wiring and doing a little bit of testing on it. And this part three video, we're going to be doing the cabinet and we're going to be applying a tweed over the cabinet and doing some nice finishing touches to it. I will finalize all the schematic and the chassis for you and we'll be linking the full build document in the description below. Thanks for all the comments and likes on this video. It seems to inspire some people to kind of get out there and have your hand at some tube amp stuff. So that's awesome. So let's get into building the cabinet and the final version of the amplifier. Okay, so here's some of the materials we're gonna be using. We're just gonna go with some standard plywood. Since this is just a head, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, the speaker resonating the sound through like a pine cabinet or anything like that. So we're just gonna be using some standard normal plywood. And what we'll do is we will just do some rabbit joints. So this is a finger joint. Um, I think for a head it's not really necessary since no one's really going to be sitting on it. So we won't do a finger joint. We'll just do like a half lap or a rabbit joint. I do have the handle here. I have some leftover tweed here that I have from a previous Harvard and Deluxe um, project that I worked on. And for the front face of it, I thought it would be pretty cool to use this fabric. So it's kind of like a tartan fabric and it has a little bit of the, the same type of tones and hues as the tweed. So that's gonna look really cool. And I went ahead and I made an amp badge forward already. And I'm gonna be calling it the Princeton One. Um, since it's kind of a Princeton preamp and it's one watt, I thought it'd be really fitting. So that's gonna be a nice little touch to the amplifier. Okay, let's just do a test fit here to see how it all looks. Now we've got the head here and we wanna make sure that this sits back and has some protection there from the controls and similar to the back and the switch. We don't know where to bump that. And we will do the sides like this and we will put it in like that. Now a few things to note, we wanna make sure that there's enough room on the side so when we wrap the tweed around, we can actually fit the cabinet in. And all we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of a rabbit. So we'll just cut up here like that and we'll just notch that section out on the tops and the bottoms. So we want to make sure that um, we cut this just below the top edge of this and we will drill some holes in this piece of wood here for some ventilation. And then we're going to take this fabric and we will wrap this fabric over top of that. So that will kind of a really neat looking contrast between the tweed and that. So the proper way to make this rabbit would be to use a stacked dado head blade like this. And it has different thicknesses. And what you do is you stack the blade up in the table saw to whatever thickness you want and you run it through. And these are a pretty good tool to have. But I realize that it's a little bit of money and a lot of people don't have a blade. So what we're gonna do is just a normal table saw blade and we will cut the wood this way and then we'll lift it on edge and we'll cut it this way and we'll cut the groove out and it necessarily will be the same. I'm gonna do it so most people could actually build this cabinet. is remove this and install the zero clearance on there. Just run it on the edge like that. So there's just a simple process there to making a nice uh, tight joint just using a standard table saw blade. As I mentioned, you could use a stacked dado head cutter or even a router bit. So just use a router with a three quarter inch bit. You can run her through and you would get the same effect as well. And we'll just run some glue along the edges and we'll clamp that up overnight. I'm not going to shoot any brads or any type of fasteners in it. It's not required since no one's really going to be sitting on this. And when I do a round over bit with a router, I don't want any of the metal hardware to damage the bit of the router at all. Since we're going to be covering this, we don't have to really worry about um, squeeze out at all because you won't see it. Now, if you wanted to have a really nice wood finish, of course, spend some time and make sure that the glue is all nice and sit. So 
So the glue dried overnight and I took the clamps off and it's all ready to go for the final woodworking process. So what I have here now is a 3 16 round over bit mounted in my router. So we'll go over all the sides to kind of match that kind of that tweed theme that we're looking for to make all the cabinets that kind of look similar. So the routering is all done. Now we'll just take some 120 sandpaper and kind of take off some of the burrs on the roundovers. Uh, what we're going to do is do the sides first and then we'll do the tops. When we do the sides, we're going to overlap it a little bit so we have a little bit of a flange on underneath each one and that's typically how the tweed amps go. Um, doing tweed, there's a little bit of a knack to it and the only way you're going to get better is by practice. So these small projects like this is really helpful. The tricky part is just doing the corners and making them nice and uh, clean. Um, what I also use is this uh, contact cement. Now this is water-based contact cement and I have really good results with this. The solvent base tends to kind of leak through and makes it all blotchy where uh, once this all the water evaporates uh, it makes it quite tacky. The only issue with this is it actually takes quite a while to here. So once you put it on, it takes about half an hour to an hour, depending on humidity, to let this all evaporate before it gets really tacky. So waited about an hour now and the glue's all dried up. So I did complete one side already, you can see. And so I'll show you how I apply on the ends. Now the ends are the tricky part because of the corners. Um, the other part, the top and bottoms, there's a lot easier to do because it's just a straight fold in where the corners are a little more trickier. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go any further, um, while editing this video, I realized I left something out. There are several different ways you can actually do corners. What I'm about to show you is my way that I found to be the easiest. Now, if you want more traditional looking corners, um, please go onto YouTube. There's some really good tutorials on people how to really cut pristine corners, but it's a little bit more difficult. So let's carry on. So what I do is I have this green tape here and that's kind of my guideline. And I kind of space it up perfectly here right along the edge there and just kind of work it. And you just slowly work it over to the other side. Try to make sure you get no creases or buckles or any air bubbles in there. If you realize that you miscut a bit and don't worry about that, you can go back in later and kind of trim it along the green tape. So trick is just kind of working it. I get to the corner here and I kind of pinch the corners right on the 45 there. Just kind of pinch that and get that. And just kind of work it around and do all four corners like that. So after you kind of got it worked out, what you want to do is make sure you have the top and the bottom. And all we want to do is make a slight little cut here. So you just take an X-Acto blade, a razor blade, and just kind of cut that. And just work that piece over. Now you can see we have a bit of an overhang, so all you just need to do is trim that off in line with the other flange. So we'll just slowly start trimming some pieces back in line with the green tape. There we go. We'll do all four sides like that. And then I take the knife and I just kind of go big first. Don't go quite tight to the cabinet, just kind of go big and just slowly start trimming it back. Now what's gonna happen is, is it may seem a little loose right now, but when we apply the other coat, the top and the bottom, the other piece of tweed, and when we actually put our shellac on here or varnish over top of it, it will all be nicely adhered so you don't have to worry about it. So we'll just do some more minor trimming just to make sure it's nice and cut. We have no frayed ends here and this side will be done. 
Now I'm no means an expert, but that, that's how I do mine. So now we got the sides all done and the corners all done to our best ability. So what we're gonna do now is put the top and bottom on. So what I typically do is just get some painter's tape and I kind of tape mask off where the glue needs to go so I don't actually get any glue on the unfinished tweed. So we'll just apply glue on here and that's where the end of the tweed is gonna overlap on that. It's all dry now, so we'll go ahead and line this all up. Wrap it around, make sure it's all smooth. The tweed is all on the cabinet, so the next step here is to test fit the amplifier chassis and put in the front panel. So now we got the amplifier mounted. I put some cleats on the side here to hold the faceplate. So right now I cut out the faceplate. This is just three quarter inch plywood. I drilled some holes in it and I put a little bevel here so it won't impede the controls a bit. And we'll just mount here and we'll just screw it from the back side in. Well, the amplifier is almost done. I love the way it's turning out. It looks pretty awesome. I went ahead and secured the handle. I secured the faceplate with some screws from the back. I put the feet on. I put the chassis auger on to fold the chassis. And in the back here, I think I'm just going to leave it open like this. I think it looks pretty cool, but I will put a couple decals on here to itemize what everything is. So what's left to do now is protect the tweed. I like to use this bullseye shellac. Now this is clear. They also make an amber uh, to give you an aged look. It goes on really fast and it dries really fast. So give this a try if you've never done that before. And I also have to put on the amp batch here. So I think I'm just going to put it in the middle here and it looks pretty good. Now if you're interested in how I make my metal badges, I have a video right here. Go take a look at that and it goes through the whole process of how I make my metal badges. It's a pretty cool process. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put all the th finishing touches on this and we'll plug it in and do some test sounds again. I'm in my living room here with the completed amplifier and it turned out awesome. I have it hooked up to my Harvard this time with a 10 inch speaker and to give you a little bit of different sounds and tones of what a 10 inch speaker sounds like. The original schematic I didn't really deviate too much from. What I ended up doing was going with the 12AT7 instead of the 12AX7. I find I don't need that much overdrive with this amplifier. And I also removed the impedance selector. So I'm going with an actual headphone jack so I can plug headphones into it. Um, I just hardwired 8 ohms to the output transformer because most of my speakers are 8 ohm anyway. So, you know, if you want to change it, you can. The headphone jack is optional. I know I said in my previous video that I would do a full-on studio track with this amplifier, but that this video is getting a little bit long. So I'm just going to do some soundtracks here. And in my fourth video, I will do a complete uh, video dedicated just to sounds and music out of this amplifier. So let's go through a little bit of sound demos. I'm actually plugged in through a little reverb pedal here. I have the Electro Harmonix uh, Holy Grail, and I just have a little bit of reverb. It really opens up this amplifier and makes it sound really huge. I'm actually quite amazed how much a little bit of reverb will add complexity to this amp. And as I mentioned, I have a 10 inch speaker in my Harvard that's nicely broken in. And we have the 12 AT7 and the 12 BH7 in the amplifier. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, that's a pretty cool amplifier. I'm really happy the way it turned out. I hope this build series inspires you to build something similar. And if you do, please leave a comment below. I'd like to know how you make out. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. I got a couple more tube amp videos coming up that you might be interested in. Once again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.